Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Joel from Black Panda Studios. Today I'll be doing my, I'm starting my um, C Sharp game programming series for the absolute beginner. So we're going to run through all the key concepts you need to know when working on a game. And eventually this will progress in making your first game. Which I am thinking of making something simple like Pong. Just having two paddles. And then maybe moving on to something more, more fun to play. So yeah. So this tutorial, we're going to be going over variables and writing to the console. So let's get into it. So I'll call this um, tutorial, I guess. You can call it whatever you want. If you don't have this up, you press new project over here or file new project. And yeah, let's get into it. Make sure console application is selected. Okay. When you um, create that, you'll be given this little piece of code. All this does is it opens and closes the console. So, pretty useless at the moment, so, yeah, we'll get into that soon. you got our using statements up here. Um, I'll get into that a bit in the future because you really don't need to know much about them, but eventually we will, and I'll explain it when we get to it. So, start off, we're going to go over um, the four main variables that we have when we're programming a game. So the first one, one of the most commonly used variables, is called an integer. Now, when de declaring a variable or setting one, I don't know, what you want to do is you want to put the data type. So the data type is an integer. An integer uh, is a whole number, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 36, 110, doesn't matter. It's a whole number, no decimal points, just whole number. Um, we're going to call this year. Now this is the name you're going to give it. So called year and equals a value. So an integer year will set it to the year it is, so 2015. So what this says is um, year, this little variable here, if we call that somewhere, this is equal to the value 2015. Um, you, that, will, that will click a bit later. It should click pretty soon. So the next one is a float. Now remember how I was telling you how an integer is a whole number? A float is similar it's a number, but it's a decimal point number this time. However, it doesn't have to be a decimal point number. It can equal a whole number, but it also includes decimal points. So we'll call it pi, because that's a decimal point number, and it's easy. Well, one, five, nine? I think so. Right, and when you're um, setting a value of a float, you want to put an F at the end. And just so you know it's a float, without the F, you'll get an error. And it will let you know down here, use an F. So, you ever see that error? It means you've forgotten to put an F somewhere. So, that this is equal to 3.14159. The next one is a pretty commonly used one. It's a string. Now, a string is just a string of text. So, a name. Now, when you're declaring a string, you want to put it in um, speech marks, quotation marks. And you want to give it the name. So, we'll say Bob. So the na his name is Bob, and yeah, so the name holds the value of Bob, and make sure it's in quotation marks, otherwise it will not, or speech marks, otherwise that won't work, you'll get an error. The next one is one of the key things when programming a game, and it's a boolean, so it's true or false, basically, so it can only equal true or false. So, a good example of one in a game would be is alive. So is alive, so if is alive is equal to true, um, execute a piece of code. Um, that's getting more into the next third tutorial in this series, but if so, if statements and all that, but it will all come together, it will all piece together eventually. So we're going to set that to true, so you start off alive. Now, also what you can do is, when you're declaring a variable, you can go int and say you want a year, an age, a height, and a width, something like that. You can just do that, and then it will go int year, int age, int height, int width. Oh, int year is already used, sorry. Um, let's go just age, height, and width. And you can expand this out as much as you want. Um, you could also go down if you wanted to. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But yeah, you can do it like that, and then later on in your code, see we've got no value, you can just set age equal to a value. So 
so now age is equal to 10. Or you can set it in here, age is equal to 10, height is equal to 180, oh, that's pretty tall, 140. Width is equal to 60, I don't know. So there you go, so you can set multiple variables from the one data type at once, but um, a lot of people just like to go down one after the other. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. Now, now that we've got some variables, we need to use them. Um, they're not being used for anything, they're just holding a value, storing it in um, memory, pretty much. So, next thing we want to do is um, how to use them when writing to a console, but first you need to know how to write to the console. So what you want to write is console, believe it or not, right, and then dot, and you'll get a list of options here. Now you press W, and you'll see some, then R, console.write line. You can click it or type it out. I suggest typing everything out word for word. It gives you, um, gets you, I don't know, you just remember things easier. So I highly suggest taking it slow and writing everything, no copy and paste. So what you want to do is console.write line, parentheses, or the bracket, whatever you want to call it, and you want to put in quotation marks and we're going to be quite stereotypical with this hello world this is a quite common tutorial printing hello world to the screen so now so that's it right we're writing to the console we'll run it oh it didn't stay open well, that's because it's going through this does everything and then it's done what we want to do is console.read um, parentheses and close that off so there's nothing in here this is just a function and what it does is it will just keep the console open until you've read it and now when you press enter it will close so as you can see now you've written your first sort of program that so says hello world and that's cool but what if we want to write the year like this so we could just write instead of quotation marks we can write year the reason we don't need quotation marks is because the variable year, no, oh, not year, we use name actually. Now the reason we don't need quotation marks is, well, it's already in quotation marks in this, so if we run this, it will say Bob. That's pretty cool, right? Um, you, can, you can also do year, and that will display it as a number, and you can also do pi, etc. So you don't need quotation marks for that. If it's already a variable, you can you don't need quotation marks. You can do any variable you have is alive. F5 to run by the way, a shortcut. See so yeah, it says true. Another thing you can do is you put the quotation marks and you could say something like the year is space. Put a space so the next bit of text has a space in between it. Okay. Now you want to go plus. Oh, that's a bit funny. Why would you plus text together? Now what's what this is doing is instead of not adding it like maths, it's putting whatever you plus to the end of it. So, say we want to plus the year. What this will do is the year is plus year, 2015. By the way, variable values can change throughout code. They're constantly changing, like health and stuff. So if you did this with health, the number will change often. Um, don't know if we should go over... How long we, how are we going? 8 minutes 30. So yeah. This is the year is plus year. Let's just do a simple um, application here. So sure, we can write to the console, we can use variables, but why use a variable when you can just try 2015? Like, it's just be easier. But the thing is, say someone's using this program in a year, right? Maybe you want to ask them what the year is because the program's not going to tell you. So what you want to do is console dot right line parentheses uh, quotation marks what year is it question mark um, quotation marks parentheses and semicolon to finish off the line if I hadn't already told you or if you hadn't already picked up most basic thing you have to remember and most common mistake is putting a semicolon at the end now if you don't it's pretty clear to let you know that you didn't just tells you it's expected, you double click the error, it takes you here, add it in. Pretty simple. Now, what year is it? So we're asking a question to the user. Now, how are we going to get user input? Well, first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to create a string user input. Now, string is obviously 
going to get a piece of text, right, from whatever the user types. How are we going to do that? So the string user input, instead of equaling it to something, because we don't know what they're going to write, of course, so we can't set it, we can't hard code it. What we need to do is we need to go console.read line, okay, and then parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. That's funny, that's not a bit of text, that's console.read line. So it's saying the user input is equal to whatever we type. So, there we go. The year is 2015. Um, just to show you actually, this needs to be set to user input because we're just using this string. Um, so I'll run this and show you quickly. I'll show you one issue we've got with this. Say someone writes, um, blah, blah, right? The year is blah, blah. Now that's just dumb, so, yeah. Well, I can fix that in a second, but that's just showing you console.readline means you read what the user types, and giving it a string called user input means we can use this and get feedback based on what they type. So they type whatever, you use that variable, and that will equal... This will be determined by what they type. Now, next thing to do is see this um, integer called year. A reason why you wouldn't initialize it up here is for this, this scenario, exactly. So int year doesn't have a value yet. So after we've got the user input, we, can s we have to convert the uh, user input into an integer. So we have to convert it into a number. So we have to go int... Um, no. year is equal to int dot pass now passing means um, see we've got a string and in a string we can write numbers right but that doesn't know it's a number it just knows it's reading it as a string so it's a it's a string representation of a number now when you're passing it what you do is you it asks you for a string so you put in user input, close that off semicolon. So what that's doing is, this is setting year, and it's um, getting whatever they type and converting it into a number. So if we type blah blah now, we'll get an error because it's in it's a string, right? But now if we type 2016, 15, I'm getting ahead of myself, 2015. The year is 2015. I'm pretty neat, right? Um, yeah, so... That's why you'd convert it to an int. Also, if you leave it as a string, say you have a number called uh, scores and... I don't know, you want to work out the average for scores? If you leave it as a string, it's reading it as text. You can't do maths on text, so you have to turn it into a integer and then you can do maths so yeah I'll get into that in the later tutorial anyways guys that's um, the very basics of variables writing to the console reading the console getting user input using variables when writing to the console and some simple conversions but yeah so rewatch this if you're confused um, I hope this helped I'm trying to be heaps in depth with everything, but yeah. So I went over three topics, pretty, pretty small topics. Next tutorial, we'll be writing our first program using what we've learnt, and it's a quite, quite a cool program. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, please subscribe, like for more. Though these part one and part two will be uploaded on the same day, so stay tuned for that. Thank you. Bye.